Hey guys, Buckeye Bar guys. Uh, we wanted to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to us here on uh, Buckeye Bar Talk. Uh, great show we got coming up today. Uh, we're really looking forward to you guys uh, listening and watching it. Um, but just wanted to remind everybody, just uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the all notifications bell, uh, and to, so that way anytime uh, a new show comes up, you guys will uh, be alerted to it. And don't forget to like the video and uh, comment on the video. All interactions with us uh, helps us continue to grow, and uh, we appreciate your support. Now to the show. Welcome back, everybody, to Buckeye Bar Guys here on Buckeye Bar Talk. I'm Mike. I'm John. Today's day is Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. Uh, a couple ga- days till the Tulsa game, uh, but uh, we got a lot to talk about about the Oregon game. It was, uh, as I like to call it, the crap show. Uh, unfortunately, the Buckeyes lost 35-28. Uh, uh, wasn't a good showing overall by the defense. Uh some stuff with the offense, but uh, right now that's uh, problems 10 through 12, and the first nine problems are all the defense. So, like, that's what it seems like. So, all the, the first 11 problems might be yeah. the defense. Yeah, it might be all the uh, – everything might be if the you, defense. If you get my drift there, it might be the, the first 11 might be the defense. Um, the offensive issues might literally just be that they're young, and they're still trying to work through some stuff. And I mean, was 28 points a great showing? No, they should easily, this team should score in the forties, but you know, Stroud looked pretty good. Once he got settled in, they probably need to work on a few things with the running game, but when they were running the ball and proper formations, they were running fairly well. I mean, Oregon's run defense. I, I, I guess I had to believe it. I had to see it to believe it that uh, Oregon is much more physical than they once were. Uh, yeah. Until you actually physically see it, I don't. So kudos to Oregon on that. Uh, Mario Cristobal is a good coach. Uh, that I mean, he's a real good coach, and I don't know. I don't know if Oregon can keep that guy because I think. Uh, You know, the now, I mean, we're not going to get into the USC stuff, but uh, with that school that's farther south of them now open, you got to figure a couple SEC schools, uh, possibly one in particular in uh, Baton Rouge might end up being open this year. Um, I mean, I think Oregon, if they want to keep this guy, they're going to have to really pay him some hardcore money because uh, I think a lot of guys, people are going to be come screaming for him. And uh, just my opinion, I I like what. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I don't think I totally agree with you on that. Um, just Oregon was much more, um, just much more physical than I expected. Uh, does that mean we should have lost that game? No. And if I defense played up to expecta- expectations, um, there's no way we should have lost that game. So we're going to get into the Oregon game. Um, we might talk, we're going to talk in generics about the Tulsa game at the end of it. Um, not going to get into too much specifics. I haven't really focused anything on Tulsa. I honestly don't even know what their record is right now. I'm their own. Gonna, okay, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, so uh, they uh, they um, just have to, uh, you know, it's just we'll, we'll get into it towards the end. It's just the things that we might need to see against a, a lesser opponent to feel like they're making improvements. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so Oregon, so. As we said, the defense, I don't know where to begin. It, there's literally issues on all three levels right now, the defense. And what's crazy to me, I actually, and I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, the least amount of issues, in my opinion, are in the secondary. <laughs> like, And that was the one thing I was probably scared of in the beginning of the season might have the most issues. But like, I'm much more concerned. I mean, the linebackers are the most concerning on the team, but yeah. – I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the defensive line either. And it's like, we can't get any pressure. I, I, I don't know if maybe they, uh, they are, they're thinking too much that maybe chase young and the Bosa brothers are still there. And maybe these guys just aren't those guys. And, you know, so maybe coaching needs to help them out a little bit more and get more of a pass rush, maybe from other angles on the defense to help them out. But, I mean, it just overall, it was I mean, they had no 
ability to stop the run. I saw a thing that got posted on Twitter today by uh, somebody, uh, one of the Buckeye fans, that, you know, basically the Oregon, one of the Oregon offense linemen said they knew exactly what was going on the whole game. And there was just no, uh, they, they didn't have any fears of what Ohio State was doing. They knew what was going on. And you just, especially a second game of the year, you can't be that predictable. Well, I mean, what was alarming by it is, you know, he said that they knew the linebackers would over pursue. They knew that there wouldn't be anyone to fill where they over pursued at, and they knew exactly where to attack. And um, the Joe Moorhead, uh, you know, he had it. He had them figured out, and it sucks. <laughs> it sucks to be a fan of the team that was figured out, especially when you're, you know, Ohio State and you're a top four recruiting class every year. Yeah. And that's the product you get on the field. And like you said, I mean, the bright spot as of today is cornerback half defense. Yeah. And I don't think we really thought, you know, that would be, I mean, we thought it would be improved, hell, but we never thought that that was going to be, you know, what we were going to hang our hat on for this defense. Yeah. And I just, yeah, like you said, pass rush is non-existent. I mean, I think I saw somewhere that we had seven hurries on Oregon. Oregon like where? Where were there seven hurries? Like I, I, I don't want to. I, I don't. I saw remember. one. I I remember one. Maybe at the end of the game because we did I get a couple one stops sack. In the yeah, I remember one sack at the end of the game. I don't know if I remember anything else. <laughs> did we get the no? Oregon got the sack, right? Did we? I we got a, I, 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 got it. We didn't get us there. Uh, uh, maybe I'm mistaken. I thought we we maybe we just hit him. I thought well, one of those two stops we actually got a sack, but I could be wrong. I don't think um, the Buckeyes had a sack the whole day. I think they had. I mean, I remember one pressure. Um, I think there might have been a held, hold on the play against Jack Sawyer. That could be a different – I don't know. But then I don't remember anything else. And I swear I read like seven hurries or something like that. And I yeah. want to see where I want to see where they were because I don't – I didn't – they're – They happen so inconsistently that you can't even remember them because like – there wasn't a stretch of the game where you just took over pass rushing where, you know, they've done that in years past. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, the crazy thing is, I mean, I'm pretty sure Joe Moorhead is at Mississippi State by tw- the 2018 season. Right, so but he's there, he's there in 2017. So he's there in 17, which is a better defense than 18. But, you know, that's a Shiano defense. And if he knew exactly what Ohio State is doing, then, you know, there was issues on those defenses. So is Kerry Combs now, you know, doing maybe a little too much that was off those defenses that, you know, he needs to adapt outside of. I mean, it's kind of feeling that way. I mean, I told you earlier, it kind of feels like they're like, oh, you guys are bigger, faster, stronger than everyone. So do your thing. See you later. I mean, I just, there is no cohesion on that defensive unit. And there wasn't any last year. But that was mostly more in the back end. Now this year it's the other side. That's like, they do they practice together? Like, are they on the same field? It, yeah. I mean, I I heard they scrimmage, right? So I don't where like I don't know how these guys don't figure out how to have like play together. Like, hey, if your lineman's here, you know, if he's setting the edge, you have to do this, and it's just nothing. Nothing flows on the defense right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's just uh. Definitely worrisome. So the linebacker issues to me is kind of like a lot of the same linebacker issues I've seen over several years now. It's that if it's, I don't know if it's just that they are just not fundamentally being taught at all or that they just have the wrong combinations on the field. And to me, it might be a mixture of both. And I think it also could be a mixture that they are calling the wrong kind of remembers makes me think back to 2013 when, uh, Luke and uh, Withers were just completely not on the, you know, yeah, on any cohesion with each other. Basically, they were, I mean, you have to call complementary defenses for every level, and they were calling defenses that uh, didn't make sense when you went from linebackers to secondary. You know, they would be blitzing guys and not having guys cover, and, you know, that side. And it's just kind of feeling like the same, maybe not with the blitzing necessarily, but that there's just no cohesion that, they're making play calls for linebackers, but they don't have any secondary guys in the correct spots to fill right. when things are, you know, when now there's a legitimate opening over there. And that's like, I mean, they ran the same, the same variation of the same play for three touchdowns. And like, right. I mean, and even, 
nothing yeah. different. And even the tight, the touchdown to the tight end at the end of the game was a passing touchdown, but that was still to the short side of the field and was still like they just don't. I mean, I understand you're loading everything to the other side and you're going to have less defense on the one side, but you got to be able to have at least somebody over there to cover something. And like, I don't know. It's just like, it's just like mind boggling to me that, uh, they just didn't make any adjustments to that through the home. I mean, the three rushing touchdowns all the same. I'm like, literally I, I was getting upset by the second one, but when the third one happened, I'm like, you got to be pretty much effing kidding me right now that, uh, <laughs> that they're not paying attention to this. Right. To the short side of the field, like just <laughs> set the edge to get the guy out of bounds. I mean, yeah. what the hell, man? It was, and so, and like the passing touchdown, that one, that killed me. Like, how can, you know, your deep safety, and I don't want to pick on the kid. I mean, Bryson Shaw had a really rough game, but, you know, it's a, it's a single high look to begin with, but you're a safety. Like, how can you over pursue there where you, you've got to realize you're the last guy of defense in the defense? Like, yeah. you can't let a guy get past you. And now it's like, you know, I mean, I think they have to really. I mean, a lot was said this week, and we'll kind of get into some of Dave's comments here in a minute. But, you know, a lot was said in the immediate post game and then into the press conferences through the week that, you know, they are changing up a lot of things. And, you know, you kind of brought this up, and I agree with you now that after I've, I've kind of thought about it some, you know, they probably have to go to some sort of cover too and drop both safeties because you, you don't have a veteran back there like Proctor. Proctor's is out. Uh, and then you, people haven't heard Proctor's out for the rest of the season. Kind of figured it when you heard it was a compound fracture. Everything you know that goes into a compound fracture. I mean, that's yeah. a it's a pretty brutal injury. So uh, he's uh, he was going to be out for the rest of the season. I I knew that once uh, you heard it. Uh, and it was just verified then. Uh, I believe yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you need a you're going to have to have some sort of help back there. And like, I, I, we can't have another 2018 season where, you know, you have an inexperienced guys when basically they were tricking full, pulling fuller, your experienced guy up and then dro- having your inexperienced guy be dropped just by motioning. So you just can't risk that at all. And I'd say now, you know, go t- if it's time to go with the bullet for sure, a hundred percent or, a much more mobile linebacker and your other two linebackers have to be mobile too. Sorry, Tommy Eichenberg, you can't be on the field anymore. It's just, I, I saw enough that uh, made me think way too much of tough Borland that, uh, and nothing against Tommy. I think Tommy's going to be in positions where he could be successful against certain teams. It's just teams like Oregon. You can't be on the field because, you know, guys like Taraja and Cody in the middle make much more sense than having a guy like Hickman, or young at the uh, um, bullet, the other linebacker, and then having two legitimate deep, deep safeties. And then that if you need to bring the, the a third corner in, the bullet gets replaced with the third mm-hmm. corner because two safeties at this point is more important than the bullets. And you got to go to a basic, I think a basic nickel, in my opinion, where you have two safeties and you either have a third corner or a bullet, and that's your next. That's the that eleventh guy. At least you know. And I, I I read this somewhere. I'm not going to take credit. I mean, I believe it was Ross Fulton that I saw this from. But at least like disguise the look, line up in two deep or two or let's split safeties, and then you know you can motion down in the single high if that's what you want yeah. to do. But give something like make it difficult, make the offense think about it, and. Really, before we go further, though, you know, you're talking about the linebackers, and I don't know, if, I don't know if he would be undersized or not, but you know, you, you got to find a way, I think, to get Kayvon Pope on the field. I, I mean, I'm with sorry, you. he only had a couple plays, and I mean, I'm, I, I said before, like, I'm sure he had his own fault that you're it's probably on tape, and I'm, you know, maybe someone can make me look like an idiot, but what I saw was him and Cody Simon were the only two that were consistently when they were in the game, they were by the ball. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And I don't know if it's, I mean, the, he has to be, he has to be showing some lack of whatever in practice, whether it's a, right. a lack of effort, a lack of, you know, not understanding something, but he's always to me made some sort of play when he's been in the games. I mean, 
even in past years, you know, when he's gotten a little opportunities here or there, he's, he flows the ball good. And, right. uh, I mean, he should have had an interception and yeah. in this last game. And, you know, and I think if he played more, he would get plays like that. And like, I don't know. It's just, again, it's like, I don't know. Like I, I get it. This is, you know, teams like Georgia, you don't need to have the super powerful, just can't move, you know, the unmovable object uh, defense anymore. Like you did back in the day, you know, if you don't have an offense that can go with that thing, you know, great defenses get scored on. And, uh, but Alabama, like Nick Saban has made this adjustment. Like he has moved his defense to year in, year out, the best defense in college football to, you know what? He's okay having a 20, maybe third, top 30 passing defense. His rush defense is still fairly good. I mean, they're Mm -hmm. not as good as maybe they were in years past, but that's all I'm expecting from Ohio State. To me, there is no reason you figure that your offense can score at fairly easy spaces, that your defense, that you're, you're going to give the, their offense plenty of opportunities. And to me, it's, it's not unacceptable to give up a 21 points and average that. So maybe a couple games you get up a little bit more and other games when you play the Tulsa's of the world, you give up some less, less yeah. points, but like 21 points is a legitimate thing where in years past, Lost you. Past, you know, yeah, we got to get that. I see you back. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you heard me through that, right? Uh, no, not really. But, I mean, I, I, I got what you were saying, though. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It's, uh, a lot to be worked on because it just seems like there's mixed, mi- like I said, the secondary and maybe in a co- maybe once we play a better passing team, if we play a better passing team, you know, we'll see some holes in the outside corners that we're not currently seeing. But even, you know, the middle passing game doesn't bother me as much. They need to work on a few things, but there's some youth issues there that I think that might be more of than anything else. Uh, uh, the, I mean, outside the linebackers and coverage, linebackers and coverage has been a bad thing for years. I mean, I, you can't even ignore that fact that that's like, I don't know what's going on there. Like, well, I mean, there's a pass rush issue too for that intermediate stuff that, you know, if you had some pressure got in the guy's face, so yeah. it wouldn't, it wouldn't be so easy, but you can't expect, you know, to stay with everyone. And especially when your linebackers don't know what to do in space. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just like that guy is a quarterback. And you knew he had legs on him and, you know, they had a good running game. He didn't throw the ball a lot, but, you know, he made, you know, he didn't look great when he tried to throw it to the outside. Uh, you know, our corners were with those guys and, you know, that's a good sign, but he made us look really bad at times in the middle. And again, I think some of that, it's a mixture. It's youth in the secondary that is not there yet, but it's there is something really wrong about the coverage skills of our linebackers. And I, I don't know if it's just the linebackers have not been. And but now this is how many linebackers groups in a row. I mean, it's, you know, the Warner and tough and the guys that were behind before them and the, you know, 17, 18, they have a lot of issues at times too. some of those teams. So like, is it, I don't even know if you can say it's the players. It seems like it's more of the schemes that they're trying to run. Yeah. I mean, Pete was, Pete was pretty good. In he was good. I mean, but there was only other... care if them was good. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe some of those teams were a little bit better. I'm, I'm just thinking about some of the linebackers that, uh, yeah, you got, you got, you got, you got tough syndrome right now. <laughs> yeah. Just not Lineback- a... linebackers do not look good on Saturday. They, had, them... they haven't looked good the first two weeks at all. And, you know, and I mean, I know we didn't get to talk last week. You know, we had some uh, health issues. Uh, seemed like uh, everybody in the family got sick all at the same time. So, uh, you know, that was fun. Uh, I blame my son for that one. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think between Jack being at uh, school and uh, just a mixture of, uh, you know, the weather changing and, just, you know, some of us being out and about and different things, it's just, there's germs around. There's other germs besides, you know, 
the the the, the pandemic stuff. Uh, I mean, <laughs> thankfully none of us had any of that. But uh, right. So uh, it's just, I mean, it was. Uh, thank God, though, probably was probably a good thing we didn't do any shows last week because I'm sure every one of our predictions we would have had a lot of egg on our face because I'm sure we would have. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. our score, our, we posted our score predictions, but I'm sure I would have made other comments about how, you know, the defense is going to look a lot better in this game. And, you know, we're, we're going to dominate and run through Oregon's lines. Yeah. And that's seven man offensive line that Minnesota threw at us. They had more to do about them running the ball on us than anything. Yet, you know, it's going to be different this week because we're going to have a different group in there uh, for three and a half quarters we didn't even have a different group we ran the same four three that we ran against minnesota and i'm like joel clad which is joel clad i mean he's been like i love fox because you know i don't know necessarily always like games at noon but you know i like that crew because i think i'm i'm like the espn crews uh, those are they the like basically Ohio State's like their Alabama the ESPN's Alabama. It's oh, like, sure, you know, yeah. They Ohio State can do nothing wrong in the eyes of Gus and Joel. It seems like it. You know, sometimes you need that in the week that you know guys that uh, fawn over all over your team. But uh, I mean, Joel brought that up how many times during that game? He's like, why aren't they changing their defense? <laughs> like, you know, I'm just like, yeah, why aren't they changing their defense? <laughs> I mean, hell, if they even if they didn't change the defense, at least know what you're doing in the defense you're running, you know? Like, I mean, my God, you complained for years about, and not you, I'm just saying, like, fans, you know, they're they're basic, and, well, at least they can tackle, and at least they were in the right place, you know? Like, and that's, I mean, Oregon, that's like, we should have, I mean, we should have beat them bad, and I said they didn't have an um, offensive identity and that, I thought that was going to be their downfall and we didn't have an offensive identity in the game but it was our defense that really destroyed us in that but I mean we should have just been able to beat that team yeah and it's like we didn't you tell him to be quiet you hear him give me one second yeah so that's uh you know it was just uh yeah it's just, it's just bad stuff and uh like i don't know what it's just like it's kind of hard to like explain because there's like so many different things that it seems like needs to be fixed as i don't even know where to begin and like you know no no i don't know where to begin either that's yeah it's, it's a tough one yeah um all right, so we're going to move on to Ryan Day's comments from this week. Now, I didn't get to hear the actual press conference, but I watched enough of the some of the the Twitter threads on Twitter that have been like, and now now I'm kind of nervous about the team. Yeah, yeah this is I agree. Kind of follow me on this one, and I I think you agree with you you just said you agree, and I think you're going to agree to uh, some of these points that this is obviously Ryan Day's first major issue as a head coach. You know, he's never – he his previous two losses were in the playoffs. And what can you say? They played a great game against Clemson. He maybe was a little too conservative at times in the red zone. You know, J.K.'s injury hurt them a lot in that game. But, I mean, a bad uh, – just a wrong uh, move by Chris Olave. They win that game if they – or, you know, unless, you know, I mean, I'm not saying they, Clemson – They got a shot. Down they got a shot. Yeah. They have a very good chance to win that game. I mean, there's obviously Clemson still has another opportunity, but you know, you know what I'm saying? They kicked Clemson's ass last year and you know, they lose to Alabama, you know, very in a very bad fashion, but there's a lot of issues that line up with that. So me in particular, you too, I think a lot of other people, you know, carry a lot of the stuff on defense. We overlook because you know what? They didn't have an off season. We are damn lucky. We're there. You know, it, it didn't I wasn't as upset about that blowout loss as I normally would have been because like that I gave a lot of a benefits of the doubts to a lot of the places. I mean, I'm kind of past giving those benefits of the doubts now, but I wish maybe Ryan Day would have handled it a little differently in the press conferences and that and we said that we've kind of joked that he's kind of like the mixture of Trussell and Urban that, you know, he knows how to dance around a question pretty well like Trestle did, but he knows how to be blunt when he needs to be blunt like Urban did. I think he went way beyond what even Urban did. I've never, I mean, I remember Urban maybe calling some players out, Cloud, to, 
but I never remember like in a bad loss, like urban, I don't think after the Purdue or Iowa game or Oklahoma that urban came out the, the next on his press conference and basically gave uh, his defensive coordinator a vote of no confidence. It felt like, so like, I mean, well, I mean, let's, you could go back to 15. I mean, a year that we couldn't even move the ball on offense and we have the most talented offense in the country. And urban didn't, he didn't say anything at that point. He didn't say people, you know, I was going to, I'm going to have to look at who's calling plays and any of that. Just, they, yeah, took, he, yeah, the one, he, they took their loss and I'm sure he called plays the next two games. I think he was, I mean, he obviously, he was, I mean, I remember him being upset against Beck and Warner and I think he, he, but I think he skirted the line a lot better. Of course, he's a much more veteran coach. And yeah. I think Ryan Day got caught up that this is his first major issue and he's going to have to learn from some of this stuff. I mean, you can't publicly say that uh, it's frustrating to me that I can't be in the offensive room because now I got to be in the defensive room. Like, right. I mean, that is, and I'm sure that was, that's been relayed to your coaching staff, but it needs to stay in the coaching staff's room. Like, you know, your coaching room, it, it needs to stay in there. It can't be out there because, you know, uh, Bill Landis brought up a great point uh, for the athletic. He, I mean, he basically, he wrote an article and, you know, I don't have a subscription to the athletic, so I didn't get to read the whole thing, but I saw how he tweeted it, that he tweeted the headline. He's like, I don't know how Kerry Combs moves forward now as the defensive coordinator after the press conference. And like, and granted, like I said, I don't have a subscription. Maybe as that article goes on, maybe Bill Landis, you know, shows how this could be fixed. But like to me, just looking how where I'm looking at is like, I really don't see how this works now going forward. That you know, it's one thing to be called out in a in a coaching room, and I bet Kerry Combs is called out in a coach room. It's like another thing when you get called out in front of the press, and he basically was called out in the front of the press over that and. I don't know. That, that I, like I said, I wish things were handled a little differently, and it makes me a little nervous. Yeah, because I mean, you don't want a full-on implosion, and you don't know what that could do for you know years in the future, or how that affects any recruits. Like you know, you see your coach do that to your defense coordinator. Maybe Kerry was the guy that you know some of these kids were coming to. And play we know for. we know Kerry's a good recruiter, so I mean. So, I mean, that could hurt that aspect of it. And guys might be like, hey, you know, Ryan, you know, things get tough and he starts acting like that. Of course, there's a lot of people that think it's awesome that, you know, he held nothing back and, you know, he's trying to do what's best for his team right now. And I don't have issue with a guy wanting his team to win and really like, you know, trying to look at things under a bigger scope and like, hey, you know, even though I'm an offensive mind, this is my team. How can I get them to get to the point yeah. that we're still playoff team? But you can't mid season when you're already struggling on the unit, you can't do that to that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean that's that's my opinion. You like you probably handle you should handle it better. If he would have come out and said, like, hey, you know, you know, I have a lot of confidence in my defensive coaching staff and but maybe as head coach I need to spend a little less time in the offense and be with the defense because you know, my responsibility is the whole team. At least, like, you're kind of throwing your coaches under the bus that, like, hey, you know, I shouldn't have to be babysitting you. But at the same time, you're also taking responsibility for it. And, I mean, you are the head coach. And you got to take those types of responsibilities, you know, for this, for when they look bad. And I'm not saying he did any or he did. You know, I mean, he, he has taken responsibilities. I heard some quotes where he took, you know, that is his responsibility. But, you know, when... Somebody says, like, is Kerry going to be continued calling plays? Well, I really can't answer that right now. Like, like you got to find a way maybe to more politically better answer that question because, like, now, which you have a pretty friendly media. Like, I mean, I'm not saying you have a bad press corps. The beat writers are pretty good. You know, they're they're not like a crazy beat thing. And, you know, they give a lot of benefits of the doubt to the Ohio State program. You know, they're tough when they have to be tough, but I, I don't think they're overbearing. You gave a lot of fodder for all of them yesterday. And, you know, that was like, I think that was the most that they've had to write about in forever. Like, it was something like really, since it kind of felt like the Zach Smith situation and like, you know, and that had really nothing to do with the team. Yeah, I I agree with that. It's just exactly. I mean, I, and I don't know how Kerry can come back from that because, it was just such a public move, and yeah. I don't know. And I, I want him to win. Obviously, you know this. This show is we're not 
insiders. We're not beat writers. We're not journalists. We're fans. That's why we do this. So obviously, you know, number one, I want Ohio State to win, but yeah. I don't want I don't want things to spiral out worse. And be, you know, because there's division in the locker. Room. And the thing that kind of makes me nervous right now is that, you know, the next two weeks, and we'll get to Tulsa here in a second, uh, you know, the next two weeks should be pretty easy wins. I mean, God forbid if it's not easy wins, then there's uh, a lot of other issues uh, underneath the surface that we have to discuss. But, uh, you know, and I, but I don't know how to judge this team, whether they're improving or not over the next two weeks, neither. But, you know, the month of October is not the easiest month in the world for them. You know, Rutgers, Shiano's got Rutgers better than what they were. I mean, we saw that last year, you know, that they're a different team. You know, Maryland, they've looked pretty good, like, so far. And granted, it's this is against the best competition, no. But, you know, they got a lot of talent there. And that just makes you think of 2018 all over again, that uh, are we going to be in a shootout against Maryland? Uh, you know, are we up for that shootout? Um, like... You know, is the defense mm-hmm. better by then? Indiana's got weapons. We know Indiana's challenged us at different times over the last couple of years, and Penn State's Penn State. So it's like that's not the easiest month there. And if they, and if this, like, if this really festers and if there's really issues here, that like that could be, there could be a situation in there in October that even in a very talented team, you discontent in the locker room, there's enough tough teams in that area that. That could be a very two and two like situation, and that's not even getting into November. So, like you know, they got to be nervous about that. Yeah, and also just, I mean, where the issues are right now on the defense. These are all teams that are showing, you know, not all of them, but some of these are showing they can run. Obviously, like that's a huge thing in the Big Ten is to be, you know, big physical run team. Of course, like, you know, you got your Maryland's and your Purdue's out there that they're kind of changing that whole narrative, but you still got Penn State on your schedule. You have uh, Indiana, which who knows what they're doing or what they're good at this year, but uh, Michigan State showing that they can run and they can play, <laughs> you know, their defensive line is defensive line and offensive line are looking good. And Michigan's running well. I mean, we'll see, you know, at the end of the day what that's all about because we've, we've said that before in September. And doesn't yeah. mean much come November, but yeah, I mean it's just it's where it's where Ohio State's going to have their greatest weakness. But that's very concerning. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, so on defense, they got to figure out a way, you know. And I uh, I shared this the other day. I forget which fan put it off. A fan that we follow. Um, I want to give him a value. Not digging through my Twitter thing, but. Wish to give him the credit, but um, he uh, he put up a good thread, and I shared it that uh, it was just that you know maybe they have to realize that you know not saying that the secondary, the outside corners are bad, but are they Akuda? Are they Arnett? Um, do we have Chase Young on this team? You know, and maybe we need to start thinking a little bit more outside the box that you don't just have a pass rush that can save you on the defensive line, and you don't just have the most locked down secondary in the world that can save you through the air. And, you know, maybe the best thing for a young secondary is creating pressure. And so maybe a quarterback throws up a bad pass and maybe yeah. they can go easy, pick off a pass and take it to the house. Maybe who knows? And, you know, it seems like, I mean, I know we did it last year. I think Sean Wade did it. And we had that defensive touchdown last week with uh Caskell Garrett, but it just, they don't Pick sevens, pick sixes don't seem like they haven't happened as frequently as they once did with Ohio State, where it just seemed like you would get a few every season. And, yeah. and, and maybe if you got more pressure on a quarterback, they would throw up a pass and you could get in one of those types of interceptions. And, you know, maybe that pressure has to come from the linebackers. And, you know, and maybe you run a little bit more zone and then you start. And you drop, you maybe run a little bit, uh, Jim Heacox defensive line and maybe every now and then drop a Zach Harrison into a, uh, you know, or what like Luke Fickle did against Alabama in the national semifinals. You know, you drop somebody back into a passing lane coming off a blitz and up oh, there's Zach Harrison and he gets a pick and like, I mean, you never yeah. know. And it's just maybe you got to start thinking a little bit outside that box and stuff that. 
we don't always have to be in man to man on everything. And when we are in zones, we got to be maybe a little, we have to be a little bit more creative where the pressure is because, you know, if, if, if your defensive line can't get the pass rush on their own, you know, eventually a receiver is going to find an open part in the zone and, you know, a quarterback will find him. And that started happening last year. I mean, it happened a little bit actually in 19 when they decided, you know, we're going to double team Chase Young, triple team Chase Young every play. And you couldn't get the quarterback from other places, and you, you give them a lot of time. Like, of course, you know, 19, you had a great secondary that could definitely cover the guys. They could stick with, you know, guys if you couldn't get home on there. But I'm, yeah, I'm a little concerned that the last two years, like our pass rush, you know, that is what kind of predicates the rest of our defenses. We have these, the, the great rushmen, you know, Larry Johnson's crew, they, they get sacked on their own, and it just hasn't happened the last two seasons. Yeah, and I mean, and I understand the philosophy of the defense. You get a pass rush, you have the lockdown corners on the outside, and the quarterback freaks out because he has nowhere to go with the ball, and he gets sacked, or mm-hmm. he makes a bad throw, or he has to throw the ball away. And, like, I get that philosophy, but if you don't have the ability to create the pass rush, and actually, I think the outside cornerbacks are better than the pass rushes right now. So like, yeah, I agree. It, it, it leaves a lot of stuff. If you have weaknesses in the middle of your passing defense, you know, it makes it does leave things open up in the middle if you're not able to get there. So, you know, force a quarterback to find that hot route. It's it's a lot easier to find guys in open zones when a defense line can't get a best rush than necessarily is the no especially if you're if you're disguising stuff pretty good, you know, make them make these are college quarterbacks. You're not up against Patrick Mahomes and, you know, the elite of the elite. You're only going to face a couple of those guys, you know, possibly every year and most likely in the playoffs. Like this guy they played the other day. He's not that like, oh, I'm not not saying he's a bad quarterback, but like he's a college quarterback. He's not anything more than that. And like, you know, hide some blitzes in there and make him make him try to figure out where the hot route is. But I mean, you're Ohio state. Like that. If he's a running quarterback, like he's a, make him beat you with his feet. Like I'm get to him. I just can't like, you, you know, it's like, well, this guy, like he, he can't beat us with his arm. Well, he can beat you with his arm. If you don't ever get to him, Like you know, he's, he's still a quarterback. He's still letting these guys run forever. And eventually someone's going to get open. Yeah, and when your rush defense isn't that great to begin with and you're you're falling for the same freaking play three times in a row, then you know, he doesn't really need to be that great even on the ground because as, as long as his running back gets get, get fight on the ground that and nobody's gonna punish his running back for trying the same play three times in a row, then uh I mean He he played a very, very average game. Yeah, I mean there was nothing spectacular of what he did. I mean they play better quarterbacks on their that have their better runners than him and have done a better job over you know the last whatever years and like exactly um i mean i think we i think we hit a lot of the major points on the defense um i don't know if you want to before we kind of get into the offense a little uh before uh we kind of talk about just the things we really need to see them improve come Tulsa time um so uh, anything else you want to throw out there about the defense? No, I mean, Kayvon Pope needs to play, and they need to tell that defense that, well, one, you know, keep your fundamentals. Stop over-pursuing. You set the edge, you know, <laughs> set the edge. Don't overcommit to the inside and leave no one there on the boundary. Like, it's just, it was crazy. Um, yeah. Get your get your pass rush. I don't know. There's there's so much wrong with the run defense that I never thought. Even in eighteen, I know you would give up like sometimes the eighty yard run or sometimes it would be the eighty, ninety yard pass, whatever it be, but it was never like consistent, like you were just terrible against the run. I mean people would break some, but this Yeah, is, and this is a bad rush. Yeah. Like in eighteen it was like you might give up hundred and fifty yards on the ground in a game, but the 90 of them were on a touchdown run and like the right <laughs> they struggled to get the rest but it's like and i remember like maryland like mcfarland you know he yeah, had there was two, two ones in that game and he had over 200 yards and there um, were some notable exceptions in that year it just but, right now the way we we're the, the way we're starting this season it seems like that this could be a 
every game type of thing. I mean, Ohio State, if Ohio State has a rush defense and in the bottom third, I mean, bottom like eighth, I think, really, in the country, I mean, that's just, that's pathetic. Well, let's put it this way. If they don't improve the rush defense and that's where they're at come the end of the season, LJ, LJ gets to stay based off of it, uh, based off a uh, prior uh, reputation. Uh, uh, at that point, that's a cleaning, that's a cleaning of a house because, right. like, I, you know, there's been some years where you've had some weaker pass defenses. Uh, they, the rush defense is their rush defense. And, uh, you know, you don't, they, you hang your hat on that rush defense that, you know, that is, they, I mean, very rarely are they outside the top 15 in rush defenses in the country. And like, you know, I mean, sometimes maybe they'll push back into the twenties every now and then, but like, I mean, even, even if you were top 30s, I don't care. Like, I mean, you said the top 20s in your rush defense for Ohio State, but like, <laughs> I mean, this is pathetic, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So offense. Um, I think there's been a lot of harsh things thrown at Stroud that I don't get. I think that uh, he's uh, he's doing okay. I think I think Justin Fields and that year with Haskins, like you know, I kind of wish Haskins would have played more like a first year quarterback at times because between that year and now two years of uh, you know Justin Fields just being Justin Fields, that I think we've gotten a little spoiled to what a first year quarterback really looks like. And I think you kind of go, a lot of people don't really remember necessarily how JT started his career at 14. You know, he had the loss too, but you know, it took him a minute to get going. I mean, he was very, I mean, it sucked that he got injured. I mean, I know a lot of people, everybody loves to remember what Cardell did, but I, I don't think a lot of people, they, I think they like to purposely block out how good JT looked at the end of that year. And, uh, you know, and Tom Herman really had that offense rolling with JT and Zeke. Um, that, uh, but it's been a while since we've had to deal with something like that. And, you know, now we are. And Stroud's looking pretty good. He, I mean, yeah, he's throwing the ball a little too high at times. He needs to get calmed down a little earlier. You know, maybe Ryan Day has to find some easier passes, maybe. You know, you know I, I would love them to run crossing routes a little bit more. Seems like he's got that down. You know, he could find his open guy in a crossing route pretty yeah. easily. That, like, I'm not ready. Like, the people that are calling for uh, Stroud to be benched, like, I'm, I'm just not there. You know, he needs to work on some stuff. He needs to, if he sees open green in front of him, he needs to take the ball, put the, take the ball down, and just run for the first down. Um, you know, on that interception he had the other day, that, you know, I don't know if he would have got to the first down, but because I think it was like a wasn't it like a 12 or 13 yarder, but, um, right, he, 14 would have, maybe, yeah. he would have had 10 yards and then that makes the next play different. I don't know where that necessarily puts them in the field. Do they want to go for it or not? But I mean, 10 yards was open there. So, you know, you take what you got to take. And so I think he'll learn that as the, probably the year goes on. Uh, I think Ryan day needs to really beat that into his head, but just before we get to the running game, I mean, just your thoughts on Stroud. I mean, I think I'm okay where he's at right now, realizing that, you know, this is his first season. Well, he's, he's not perfect. No one's perfect. But, I mean, yeah, I think we absolutely were spoiled with Justin Fields. I think some people even, I mean, Dwayne, I think some people are even kind of forgetting some, some of the points where he struggled. I mean, I think right now C.J. Stroud is just as good as a downfield thrower as Dwayne Haskins was that year. I don't know. I mean, I, I think so. I mean, I know he's overthrown some people, but Dwayne wasn't killing people down the field. Like, everyone, like, yeah, Justin Fields was, I mean, he was special, but, like, he had an, an incredible downfield accuracy. I mean, you can't even just, like, you don't have guys. like that. It's just Justin Fields is Justin Fields. You can't expect the next guy, especially in his next, you know, in his first start, you can't expect him to be doing that. So, yeah. I just, I don't know. People got to lay off. He's put up really good numbers through three, two starts when he hadn't even thrown a collegiate pass. So, yeah. Give the guy a break. Now, I did say to you, though, 
I mean, you're two games in, like you, you got no loyalty really to the guy. You don't have to. I mean, if you, you can go in these next two games, you can get some sort of rotation going and see if your offense moves any smoother with McCoy. Oh, yeah. Like if your run game start going or something like that. But if Ryan Day doesn't choose to do that, there is nothing wrong with it because there's yeah. no reason CJ Stroud should be fetched. And I think that yeah. th- that needs to be a clear distinction that just because you can make that decision to see if one of these other quarterbacks runs your offense better doesn't mean you should or you need to. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. Um, all right. So the rushing game. Um, you've brought up some good points. I think they need to change their, and I agree with you. They need to change some of their formations, how they're running the ball. Um, if you're going to do that, uh, I think if you're going to do that, um, you know, that side handoff where it kind of looks like maybe it's a read, maybe it's not a read. Um, you got to run that more to the outside zones. Um, like, and I know these guys aren't you know like Nick Chubb or anything like that, but, uh, you know, and, I was getting ready to text you the other day, like, because Chubb had that big run to the outside that was on one of those type of handoffs. And of course, then on the next play, he fumbled it. And I was literally in the middle of a uh, typing, texting <laughs> you that, uh, you know, that's the type of run I want to see for the Buckeyes. And then I deleted it because he fumbled it. But, uh, I, I think that's the type of plays they should run that on. If they're not going to run those plays, then, you know, those wide outside zones, then, uh, if you're going to run it up the middle, you know, run it out of the pistol. So, yeah. you know, I think uh, Mayan and Henderson are both better. Mayan's, Henderson's probably better on the, you know, the sides handoffs than Mayan is, but it doesn't, if, if there's no threat of a quarterback pulling it, then they are, somebody is going to crash down hard. You know, maybe, maybe you start combating that with uh, you, you know, you kind of pull, you pull a tight end the other way to take out that guy that's crashing down. But, uh, right. you know, so there's some blocking schemes you could do to that, or you could just go into a pistol formation. And Well, and why I think you go with the pistol. Uh, oh, sorry, I lost you for a second. Uh, those two, One. I'm, uh, I'm glad that they've settled on those two, but, uh, you know, that, yeah. It seems like. Yeah. yeah. No, I, but like what I was saying, you know, about the whole pistol thing, if I wouldn't care if Stroud wasn't, you know, if he's not a runner, I wouldn't care with the side handoff if they could develop an RPO out of that. Because yeah. that's a fact. If he can pull that out and throw the ball, then that's fine. You can still keep going with that because then that'll end up working. Because then, you know, guys aren't going to crush th- or crash down those running backs. Well, you're not even going to have that part of your game, and the quarterback's not going to run it all. So every time they see that type of, you know, that play, that motion, they know to crash down the running back. There's no point to it. Just have a pistol. You can run play actions out of that. Yeah. And just, I mean, I I think your run game would, would be better. But, I mean, I'm not Ryan Day, so I'm not an offensive genius. It just, I think, you know. It's just that's not working. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm glad that they, uh, I glad that they've kind of settled into those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like them to, de- well, whoever it is, I'd like them to develop. Uh, now uh, if you're down to two, try to develop a starter and then, uh, try to get the other guy probably around 15 carries in a game to really get a good spell, you know, because, you know, if the defense is going to, I mean, I, I love our receiving core. We saw a lot of out of the receiving core in the last game. We saw Fleming. We saw JSN. I mean, I'm completely fine with the receivers are playing right now. Uh, yeah. That I, I, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of Garrett Wilson does, but they need to start keeping in the back of the head, especially if they cannot get this defense settled down, that they do need to develop a running game because that, you know, you got to maybe come into those type of mindsets that, hey, I need to run the ball 30 times at a game because, you know, it helps keep my defense off the field a little uh, more. Right. And also it just wears down the defense, the other defense. Yeah. So, like I said at the beginning of the show, right now offensive issues are so far down the list right now that I think we're fine on offense. Uh, I'm okay where I'm seeing the uh, 
you know, the offensive line. I, I was a little nervous early in the game. It just seemed like we couldn't get any holes opened up. But I kind of uh, I, I kind of watched the first half over again um, Sunday, and uh, there were some issues with that. But there was also issues that I thought the, the they were actually doing okay and getting on their blocks. It was just that. Oregon was filling fast and they were making their tackles, uh, you know, and I don't really know. Sometimes that just happens and, you know, you got to wear down teams maybe. To, and I think if eventually if they kept on wearing them down, wearing them down, they would have started getting to those, those holes. But I think there's got a point then where day was a little nervous because the defense looked so bad that uh, he was trying to throw it more. But yeah. And, I mean, that was, that, that was obvious. And as the game was going on that and when you saw how many times Stroud threw the ball that, uh, you know, he was they were getting to, they were abandoning the running game. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you, you weren't never out of it. But what what can you do? I mean, you got to score. And that that was the only option he was faced with when your defense can't stop anything. I mean, they can't stop the same play at the same yard line three times in a row for a touchdown. Like, yeah, I mean. They had no confidence in the defense getting a stop that he could try to, you know, get his run game going. So, yeah, he had to keep throwing because he had to believe he had to keep getting touchdowns on the board. Yeah. That's, the oh, way yeah. he, that's the way he knew he could get them against. Yeah. So I'm I'm not too worried about the offensive line. I actually, I actually love right now what I'm seeing in the offensive line and pass blocking. Uh, that is the one that Stroud has not faced any pressure in two games. Like, you know. Well, like, besides the fact to end the game. Very little, very yeah. little. Uh, I mean, you know, that's pretty much it. And that's like, you know, I mean, he has faced very, very little pressure at all. I mean, it doesn't even – when you said it, couldn't think of the seven times Oregon was rushed. Like, I that I think that's the only time I could feel like Stroud was rushed in that game. Like, Right, those two times right at the end, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm fine where we're at offensively. I, I, I think – uh develop a running game, uh, maybe run out of some better formations, as we said, try to establish which one of these two are our actual starter and which one of the two are the actual backup, you know, and I think go from there, um, you know, try to mix master in when you can mix them in. But uh, I think right now they're the best with these two running the ball. Um, Did we get a status update on Crowley? No, I mean, I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. So maybe, um, I didn't see anything. I tried to look it up yesterday, and I couldn't find anything. It didn't look great the way he was reacting. Uh, that it seemed like he thought there was something seriously wrong because you you know you don't you're not emotional like that. Uh, you know, right? He's been through those injuries. I bet he knows how some of those injuries feel. I hope it's not another knee, but you know, I can't speculate right now. Huh? You know, I hope he comes back. Uh, would hate to have him another major season ending injury. I mean, that's just like, that's you know, you feel bad. And, but it, I mean, we've said this about Cam Bab too. It just, sometimes it seems like that when they, when they hit, they hit and they just, once you get them, then they just become easier and easier every time. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, yeah, I'm okay with Stroud. Keep it going. Maybe like some of the other guys get in there. I, I saw a lot of things about Ewers this week, but like, I don't know how much users actually practiced. I mean, he's in the bottom of the depth chart. And uh, so like Ryan Day can't just like, Hey, you're if uh, I think everybody has to realize that if Stroud's getting benched, he's getting benched from a cord and you know, they're going to go from there. Like, you know, <laughs> well, and that's like, and people, you know, they say things about, you know, Kelly Bryant getting benched for Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence also came in at garbage time. Those games looked really good in them. You know, it just like, have yeah, no snaps, and they're like, okay, Trevor's the starter. Yeah, like, we've never gotten to see any of these guys at any garbage time yet. So, like, which is kind of surprising to me because I figured I knew that these were going to be some tough games to start off the season, but I kind of figured that we'd see some maybe garbage time in there, but no. So, you know. Go, go back to the defense for a second because we didn't talk about this. How surprised are you with the rotation, especially linebackers? They're the two two hardest games maybe on the schedule. Yeah. And I mean, I know I'm at Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, they might all end up being harder than Minnesota. I don't know. But I mean, Oregon was definitely circled as like your premier game. And 
you were like treating it like it was little league baseball, you know, or like hockey line. Like I just, yeah. you don't do that in football. I was more okay with it with Minnesota because I understand some of those guys were so close that maybe you weren't hundred percent sure where everybody was at. And they kind of stopped doing the rotation as much in the second half. I mean, it seemed like they were starting to settle in what their like main rotations were, but like their main guys. And then they went right back to it, except Eichenberg. He was out there every single play. It seemed like, <laughs> like, you know, I, just, I feel like, you, you know, they've done that before where they're like, well, he's our best run stopper. So he's going to be in against the running team, but he's obviously not like, I don't think he, he doesn't have a lot of, like at least not great awareness when he's I, approaching runs. He gets I've blocked. He gets blocked by his own guy. And I and it was the same problem I had with Tuff. And like and maybe I, I think Eichenberg's actually a little bit more uh probably much more a little bit more athletic than Tuff. So, you know, he's probably a little bit better. But the play middle linebacker, if you're gonna play a true middle linebacker set, and now granted I go back, you know, I think about like Raycon McMillan, Curtis uh, or not who was the, what's the one kid that played with McMillan uh, that was a senior there? Curtis Grant, right? Um, yes, yeah, Grant. You know, and he had some issues early in his career, but even he, when he got up to that, you know, as he got older, he got better at the position. And then you go back, you think about Laurinaitis, and you think about Wilhelm, and you think about Schlegel. Middle linebackers, you're not expecting them to cover the whole field, but you're expecting them to cover half the field. They're either coming downhill and taking the running back in the hole or they're taking the side that the running back is going to, and they're there. And, you know, it's in the best linebackers. They're always there. They're like, you know, they understand it. They, they see it. They see it. if it's coming at them or if they have to move and they have that quick awareness. And I, that is the one thing that they have been missing for a while. And like, like, if you're going to play that with a true middle linebacker, the middle linebacker has to see it. He has to have that reaction point to be able to, in a split second, diagnose a play that, you know, if it's coming at me up the middle or do I have to move to one of my sides to follow the ball? And right. I'm not saying it's an easy thing and you have to be super athletic to do it. But, you know, when you come from a, a type of – when you think about some of the middle linebackers Ohio State has had in their past, you know, I'm sorry, you have a lot, you have a lot of reputation you have to live up to. And if you're not going to be able to put somebody out there that can live up to that reputation and people can say what they want about Ohio State fans, but for fans that have been here for a while, I mean, we're intelligent enough that we have seen what really, really good middle linebackers look like and then what subpar middle linebackers look like. And, you know, like I've seen that enough in my life that I, I know what they're supposed to look like. I'm not saying I could do it because I can't, but uh, I, I know what it's supposed to look like. And uh, so if you can't put that out there, then you got to just have two middle linebackers that are supposed to be what they're supposed to be doing with that bullet. And, you know, between a, uh, what is it? The mic and the will, and they're, they're supposed to be interchangeable and all that stuff. But like, I'm just not, it's, if you're going to go straight four three, you better have somebody in that middle that can do that, that can cover literally half of the field and, Whatever half of the field that that ball is going to, he's going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I just you got to know where the blocks are and how to engage where the ball is at middle linebacker. And it just like when I saw Tommy Eichenberg, I mean, run into the back of his own players up at the line of scrimmage. Like, yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen anything that bad a, a linebacker taking himself out of a play. Like on the one where they had that big run for the touchdown up the middle, it's like literally he followed a guy to the outside and they just ran up right behind him. And it's just like, you know, I'm sorry, the most the middle linebacker shouldn't be taking a motion guy at all. Like if that's part of your defense, have we learned nothing? Have we learned nothing? If that is part of your defense, that is a mistake. Like you know, you push that off to an outside backer. Like you know, that's their jobs. Like you know, like you need to be there to protect the middle of the field. I mean, I, I realize it wasn't Devontae Smith, but have we learned nothing, man? I mean, that's just, yeah. And, I mean, honest to God, Mike, I, Zach Boren in 2012 was better than what we have now. Yeah, and that was his first year. You know, yeah, <laughs> I include him in one of our good, decent middle linebackers. He at least understood what they were supposed to be doing. And that, that's taking nothing against him, but he was a fullback up until halfway through that season. So, yeah, like he was, I mean, he's better than what we have right now. Yeah. 
So yeah, I have a lot of concerns. If you're, if if you can't at least put that guy out there, then you got to run with a nickel defense. That needs to be your base defense, and you know, and have more athletic linebackers out there then, and you know that bullet guy or a third corner or whatever it's going to be. But yeah, it can't be uh, it can't be a middle linebacker like that if he can at least. Like he can't be following a motion guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, and I and I don't know if Taraja is that guy either. I mean, he was definitely much 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 better than Tommy Eichenberg. But yeah, I I mean Cody Simon. Cody Simon's your guy. He needs to be on the field. Yeah, yeah, that's what I agree with. Um, all right. So I'm trying to think about uh, maybe the problem with Tulsa coming up is just that. It's so hard to like just to figure out like like they should win this game fairly comfortably. Now, if they don't win this game fairly comfortably, you know, and I'm not gonna even say the L word because that shouldn't happen. If the L word would happen, then you know, like we might have to take we'll have to take a few days again to the next show because like you know, I might have a heart attack and you know, like can I can I uh, pressure <laughs> might be go uh, fully bl- full blown at that point. And I, uh, I, I got to step in here for a second real quick. So I was looking at, you know, the ESPN, the, the breakdowns they have before the game. Do you know the, the percentage? What percentage do you think uh, Tulsa has to win this game, according to ESPN? I mean, I would hope less than 2%, but am I wrong? 5%. I was about, like, pissed off when I saw that. I mean, 5%. Tulsa has a 5% shot to win this game. Are you kidding me? And it's like... It's like Ohio State still is a ninety five percent. Like I don't care. Like I think that's the that's like the the worst thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, five percent Tulsa as a shot to win this game. Yeah, no, that's that's awful. Um, they played very close their first two games though, and one of them was against Oklahoma State, which I don't think you know they're definitely not as good as Ohio State. We, we are the real OSU, even though you know we just we had a rough game against Oregon, but. Um, I mean, Tulsa's played two really good games. They've lost both of them. I think one was actually good in FCS school, but they played Oklahoma State within a touchdown. I think – so, like, the things I need to see that just – I just got to see better defensive formations and schemes and guys just knowing where they're supposed to be, better tackling. Just It needs to seem like the defense is getting better. Like, And I know that, like – if we end up winning this game, like, you know, I'm not going to put a score on it if because, you know, we could win this game by 30 points, like a 63, 35 game. And I don't even know that. If, and I would still I don't know. Know. Feel, yeah, you wouldn't feel good. <laughs> like, you know, depending how those 35 points were scored, like if they were literally all scored in the fourth quarter, maybe I would feel better about that. Maybe not. You know, I might not like how the game finished, but, you know. If it was kind of well mixed throughout the game, I, I don't think I would like that. So, like, I, I don't know how to judge it because we should comfortably win. But, like, I just want to see are there – are there at least when guys catch the ball, there's going to be guys that catch the ball. Are there guys there to tackle them? And when they're there to tackle them, do they make the tackle? It's the first thing I want to see. Second thing is I want to see linebackers that are supposed to be in position. Like, you know what? Don't let these plays off tackles and stuff like that. And there is nobody there to set edges, whether that is a defensive end or an outside backer or the cornerback. I don't care. Or another safety, whoever's supposed to be there to set an edge, set the damn edge. And- right. If you see you're the last, if you know you're the last guy over there, yeah. set the edge. Don't let someone get outside of you. Like, I don't even care if there's a lead blocker out there. If you have to blow the guy's knee out and risk taking a penalty and, <laughs> to knock the guy over like you know and maybe make some traffic jam because you took a lineman's legs out you know what they do it <laughs> yeah i mean we got more i'm sorry i was, I was gonna jump in but um and then i want to see pressure my god just put this guy's on his butt this quarterback i don't i don't know if he's good or bad or whatever but you know what there better be sacks in this game and there better be at least I want this guy to feel like he's in like lots of duress. I don't know how good Tulsa's offensive line is. I have a serious doubts that they're in the same compatible league as Ohio State's defensive line. And if you I would hope see, to God not. 
if I don't see this guy in like a lot of duress throughout the game, even if they only get one sack, I want to see this guy knocked down. I want to see him hurried. I want to see him making mistakes. And mm-hmm. it, it, so defensively, if I don't see those things, if I don't see better tackling, at least guys being in a position in the secondary, if I don't see guys in position in the linebacker room, and if I don't see pressure, then I don't think I feel, I don't know how well I'm going to feel going into October. Then I'm going to start getting really nervous that one of these teams in October is going to knock them off. And like, yeah, I think, I mean, at this point, I don't know if I need to see, you know, as much as what you're looking for. I mean, I, I kind of do, but I just hold Tulsa under their season averages right now. And of course, you know, keep them under your season averages too. start getting things going back, trending the right way. I don't want to see Tulsa getting, you know, 300. And 80 yards or whatever. I think Ohio State's giving them like 450. Of course, you know, I want that less, but start getting things to start trend the right way. Um, you know, keep them under their end. And that'll yeah. be, that, that's a good step. If you can get Tulsa playing worse than what they have. I think on the yardage thing, like I said, I don't really know how good of a passing and some people would probably roll their eyes when I say this. If I, if we, If we see them, in them, I feel better. Yeah. Yeah, I I think so. I mean, I, I know yardage isn't everything. I mean, look, Ohio State had how many yards? CJ Stroud had like 500 yards. What? What did we yeah. have? Six, 600 total yards in that game? I think it was close. And we had 28 points. It was getting close to 700, I think, by the end of the game. And, like, I mean, I could be wrong there, but it seemed like that. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, so, so yardage isn't that- everything. Offensively, that actually, that was what I'll say on offense. If uh, you're going to get 700 yards, you know, mm-hmm. make the you scoreboard. Score 60 points. <laughs> make, make sure the scoreboard starts matching the yardage because you don't know how good your defense is going to be. And Ohio State did make some mistakes against Oregon in the, when they got on the positive side of the field. So if you're going to have 700 yards, 600 yards, whatever, you know, we'll say 550 yards plus, um, make the scoreboard look like what the yardage is. And yeah. like, you know, you should be able to score 50 plus points at that point. And like, right. Yeah. And, I mean, because I mean, if defense is done, they can't, the team can't punch it in. They don't care how many yards you're going to rack up. And it probably is a good thing. I mean, in, in the long run, it might be a good thing that they were not able to match the scoreboard to their yardage count, because then that might amass the defense just enough that, I don't know if Ryan Day, if if they end up winning against Oregon 55-35, you know, I don't know, you know, yes, he still needs to go in front of the media and do a better job in front of the media, but maybe he is not ready to clamp down on some stuff yet because, like, you know, it's still early in the season, you know, we'll get better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe he needed to see that, that, you know, what I saw from Oregon that if we score 28 points in the game, we should have beat them 28 to 21. Like, I, yeah. I, I didn't see any like master plan by Oregon that was supposed to put up a lot of points. And like, you know, I, I don't see where we couldn't have held Oregon to 21 points. Like we could have still won that game at 28. And yeah, like, I agree. I agree. They should, so, they should have been able to hold that team to 20. Um, so offensively, what I want to see, what I need to see, um, I just want to see Stroud continue to get better. Just, you know, get, to, get your throws down a little bit and you just calm down a little bit. Uh, you know, high throws are going to kill you and you, you threw an interception, you know, you're going to, you, we have great pass catchers on the team, but even those guys, they can only jump so high and, you know, mm-hmm. and these guys try to catch it. And, you know, that's when you're going to get deflections when you throw it high and they're trying to catch it, you know, you're going to get a deflection. And that's where you get interception. So, you know, got to get your ball down. Um, and then the only the other thing I really want to see is just I want to see them come get a running identity going. Well, let's maybe get back to uh, I love our receivers, but those those passes are going to be there. Help mm-hmm. Stroud get calm into games by building a running identity. And, you know, that way, you know, you get up by a couple touchdowns. You're run, starting to run the ball down the people's throats. 
and he starts feeling more comfortable and he and that eases him into games and that's what I use the running game for get Stroud into games with your running game do you remember Penn State in 2019 I think it was the entire first drive that they didn't even pass the ball they just and they're like you know of course everyone thinks all fields is going to come out throwing and it was J.K. Dobbins I think just ran every single play fields probably helped too and they were they scored again a field goal, but they went right down on Penn State. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember. You got to do stuff like that. Get that going. Get the run game going. That is what makes this offense go. Oh, I would love them to do that. If uh, I mean, I would love them to do that in these first two games. You know, and granted, they score right away against Minnesota, but against Oregon, you know, just come out and even if they are tackling good and you're only getting four yards a pop, well, you know three, four yard gains is a first down and, you know, three, mm-hmm. four yard run. So just keep running it, man. And, uh, like, yeah. just, uh, you know, and if, if it takes you 15 runs to go score a touchdown, well, it takes 15 runs. I don't give a crap if it takes eight minutes off the clock. Like, you know, get your, get your, set your identity by running the ball and that gets everybody again. Your your linemen feel good about yourself. Stroud's happy. The receivers are happy. Your running backs are happy. And you know, and you just show the other team that you guys are the boss. And uh, you know, it doesn't matter what happens on defense. You're going to come out and you're going to bully them. Yeah. And, you know, and by the come come third quarter time, you're going to be so uh, sore and stuff that Stroud's going to be throwing the ball all over you at that point because. Like you're not going to want to rush him. You're not going to want to engage our offense alignment anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's the way, way I would. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yep. I agree. That's yeah. That's just what you got to do. All right. So uh, anything else you want to throw out there for Tulsa? No, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing a, Unless you want to do players of the game or anything. No, because well, you never know what a rotation is going to be like in a game like that. Yeah. Uh, just expect us to win. I, all we're going to touch is this. I'm not going to worry about scores this week. I just want to look better. And, uh, like, I don't know what that looks like because, but I'll know it when I see it, what looking better looks like. And just hopefully we see it. Yeah. So, no, I'm good to get out of here. What about you? I'm good. All right. Well, Sorry if you guys heard any dogs barking or any uh, technical snafus. <laughs> I think one of our internet connections might not have been the best today. But uh, thank you, everyone, for stopping out tonight to the Buckeye Bar. I'm John. And I'm Mike. Oh, I O. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Buckeye Bar, guys, on Buckeye Bar Talk. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that all notifications bell so you see when new content is added. And please remember to like and share so we can grow our audience. Uh, don't be afraid to comment. We want to know what you're thinking and we want to know what content to add for you guys. O-H-I-O.